Investors do not understand the battle that is going on between the US and China right now. They think it's about soybeans and handshakes. The ignorant rarely come out unscathed from a major event. What we are witnessing are two sides fighting for hegemony in the global order. One is trying to maintain its dominance, the other is slowly catching up. This will not be resolved anytime soon. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at what is happening between the US and China. This goes far beyond any trade agreement, any information you're seeing in the news or on the G20 photo op handshake type of scenario. What we are looking for is the information that is underlying all of this. Now I've been covering all the information that's related to these technical indicators that have been coming out. I've shown you the global economic statistics that are so important and we need to piece that all together. I'm going to show you what Nuria Rabin has said I'm gonna give you the information coming out of China with their PMI's recent information and we're also going to look at the statistics for 2019 giving you all the data you need to know let's begin right away Nouriel Rabini is often referred to as Dr. Doom. He sees the trade issues tipping the global economy into a recession. Just to give you a little backstory, Nouriel Rabini, I read one of his books previously. I believe it was called Crisis Economics, something like this. And I didn't agree with the solutions that he presented in the book, but certainly he points to the problems, just like people from the IMF and the World Bank and the biz. They're often acknowledging what the issues are, and at least, at least, they're doing so. Now he always talks about printing money to get over the current problems, give the liquidity that the system needs and then pull it back at a later date. Don't go over excessive and so on. But that's what all central bankers are saying at all times. No, we just want to stimulate now and later on we'll let the economy do its own thing. We'll let the markets do their own thing. We just want to be there to support when necessary. But look, we're 10 years out and clearly that is not possible. So this is something that I, I generally disagree with about Nouriel Rubini, but when he points some things out, I do pay attention. This right here is one individual that's always there at the World Economic Forum with all the globalists. He's there at Davos telling people how it's going to be, where we should look at this and that solutions. But ultimately, I just want to note what he's saying and then we go from there. He's talking about the trade issues. He's talking about what's happening with the different tech companies like Huawei. And he's suggesting that we are at the beginning of de-globalization and the decoupling of the global economy. We'll have to redo the global tech supply chain. And eventually by next year, if this escalates, it will be a global recession. Now he's calling for that. I'm not necessarily suggesting this, but where we are at today is already showing us so many signs of this, whether it's with earnings, whether it's with the economy itself. I'll give you some details more in a second. Rubini is pessimistic that the world's two largest economies will work out a long-term agreement anytime soon. And that's because of everything that's been happening back and forth. I mean, it has been a little bit ridiculous if you've been paying attention, not just to my channel, but to the news in general. Every day, it's something changing. We're always trying to see and understand, okay, well, what's happening this week? I thought everything was good and suddenly it's not. Then we get unconfirmed sources reporting something. The stock market goes higher and then we realize, oh wait, that wasn't true. The stock market doesn't even come down as a result. Something really fishy is going on behind the scenes. Anyway, more in this article here, as well as the next. Basically, he had done an interview and they're just quoting from him and I wanted to touch on that. My base case is that the trade and tech issues between the US and China is going to get worse. Manufacturing is already in a recession globally, something that I've been talking about all the time. It's affecting services. The tech sector is in a slowdown. All of this information is what we've been looking at for the last little while from 2018 into 2019. Real economic statistics have been showing up and pointing to the truth. It has already been in the data, the collapse of the capex, and once the capex is down, then industrial production is down, and then employment is down, and you have the beginning of a global recession that starts in tech, then in manufacturing, then in industry, and then it goes to services. That's what he's saying, and I do believe that people should be paying attention. 
the US-China trade issues and a spike in oil prices from geopolitical tensions have the potential to push the world into recession next year, according to renowned doomsdayer Nouri al -Rabini. Actually, he's not really that bearish, but anyway, it's a scary time for the global economy. Although Rubini likes to suggest that these central bankers should print money up front, but then pull it back later, what he's saying here is that they can't do so at this level because they have not been able to bring these interest rates up to a realistic level. Monetary policy makers ability to respond to shocks is impaired with benchmark interest rates still at historically low and in some cases negative levels. High levels of debt will also pose a constraint. Optimism will likely collapse like in every other recession. And of course, further unconventional monetary policy is likely to be needed. As we have seen in the previous cycle, this will ultimately end with some crazy idea of purchasing stocks, purchasing corporate bonds, purchasing ETFs, purchasing anything and everything to make sure that this system stays alive just a little bit longer. Now I want to get into what is happening with the Chinese PMI. This happens to mirror what we're seeing in Europe. What we're seeing basically globally is that manufacturing is down. This is the China general manufacturing PMI just showing you the details that as it shows a little bit further down the page falling from 50.2 to 49.4. The headline seasonally adjusted purchasing managers index was below the critical 50 threshold for the first time in four months. Remember, once it falls below 50, that is a contraction. This is not just in China, as I have noted many times before. Of course, it's all over the world. This just gives you an idea that while, in fact, it's not just one country, it's not just one part of the world here, we are looking at this happening all over the place right now. And this is just some further details giving you more PMI data that goes along with all of the others. Really quickly, I wanted to run through some information, give you the statistics to keep you up to date with what has happened throughout 2019. We have seen so many different assets that have performed very well. Basically the opposite of 2018, where 93% of assets found themselves in the negative for 2018 on the whole, we have seen the complete opposite right now for 2019 so far in the year. You got to look at it measured in the local currency. You have to look at it measured in US dollars, depending on if this is a commodity, if we were looking at a particular asset around the world, but I'm going to show you both. Take a look at this right now. Total return performance of major global financial assets, specifically in June. I'll show you through the second quarter and the year to date, measuring this in local currency and US dollars. So right here, we're looking at local currency. You can see that oil is on the very left hand side the best performer gold just behind that you're seeing italy stock market the nasdaq the smp chinese stock market is in here and others okay so that's for june specifically then you can see in us dollar term italy stock market russia stock market oil gold germany and greece's stock market as well then we look at the second quarter and greece's stock market has done very well russia is out there gold germany and others measured in both both the US dollar and their local currency doing very well. Now, if you look at year to date, Greece's stock market has outperformed all the rest. Now, this is one country that has basically no valuable assets left. They completely destroyed it with the Troika commanding over them and taking over everything that they once had. I'm not sure if there's anything left at this point, but anyway, their stock market has done very well this year. Right behind that, we can see oil, both WTI and and Brent, then we have the NASDAQ and so on. So you can follow that if you're interested on taking a look at all of these different charts. One that needs to be noted, as you can see on the very right hand side, is silver. Silver has been the worst performer out of all of these. My goodness, actually down, I believe it was 1.2%, something around that range. Gold, on the other hand, has done reasonably well throughout this period of time. So there is a huge disparity in between gold and silver 
silver right now. The ratio has been completely thrown off. I wanted to mention that because I know that I have many people on my channel that are interested in this information. So definitely take a look at not just gold, not just silver, but the ratio in between the two. Also wanted to note the fact that what we have seen in many cases is that all of the money rushes to gold initially when there's that sort of fear mentality happening and then silver comes up behind it and escalates much further much faster that could happen not saying that will but that is certainly potential this time around i'm going to end the video there if you found it informative please hit that thumbs up button when you give me a like you're supporting me so i do appreciate that very much if you want the financial education that was not taught to you in school then you got to read these two books they give you all the details all of the things that you need to know related to money what you need to do to take care of yourself as well as your family and so on check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com Hold on, wait a second, don't go anywhere because this video right here is what you need to watch right now. Click on it and I will see you there.